it's important to constantly keep safety moving forward. You know, you've got to think of safety as something that's dynamic. You've got to keep making it better and better and better. And I promise you, it'll pay off. My name is Dr. David Michaels. I'm an epidemiologist and professor at the George Washington University School of Public Health. From 2009 to January 2017, I ran the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. I was the longest administrator in the agency's history. Right now, most of my work is focused on how corporations can be safe, productive, and profitable at the same time. There's a very important relationship between operational excellence and safety. When workers are getting hurt, it's a sign that things aren't going right. Operational excellence is missing. You know, when I was running OSHA, I saw that there are several successful strategies that can be applied by businesses that want to reach operational excellence at the same time ensure their workers are safe. And I want to talk about those today. Make sure you incentivize the right thing. Don't incentivize low injury rates or no injuries, which some companies do. What that does is that incentivizes not reporting an injury. It doesn't actually prevent injuries. If you want to prevent injuries, the thing to do is incentivize safe behavior, incentivize identification of hazards or good observations. There are lots of things that you want to do that are positive. Incentivizing a negative just doesn't work. One strategy which I think is particularly effective and very important is to make it clear how much a business values their employees. And that really has to come down from the top where employees, where workers see that safety is important that their safety is going to be something that the whole enterprise cares about and they're encouraged to raise issues to show where their hazards are and that the management looks at that and says we're going to deal with those hazards. Continually focus on risk reduction, trying to encourage people to identify problems, to make good observations and then address them. It's counterintuitive but you want to see more hazards identified because the more hazards you identify and eliminate, the safer your workplace is going to be. Assume that workers are going to make mistakes and don't blame them for mistakes because we're all human. We all make errors all the time and you can't be in a workplace eight or more hours a day and not sometimes make, make a mistake. What you have to do is build your system in a way that mistakes won't result in people being hurt. And that's the way we design jet planes. That's the way we design nuclear power plants because we can't afford a mistake in those situations. Well, that should be true across every workplace. Some advice I give to employers is to set up a, a system where you identify the, really the critical tasks of every day. Get your workers together, say, okay, what are we doing today that could be dangerous? Maybe it's maintenance on some machine, going up on some height. Make that task a very special task, and by taking it out of the ordinary and making it a special task that people do together under different conditions, you're much more likely to prevent the injury from occurring. What successful companies see and what safety directors help their management see is safety culture and operational culture aren't separate things. What we have to be talking about here, and this is really sort of the, the mindset change, is every company needs to be thinking about safe operational culture. That if you can't operate safely, if safety is not at your core, you're not going to be successful in that way.